your homeowner gives you a call and they say that I got shingles all over the place. Every time I walk outside, there's another shingle on the ground that wasn't there before. Well, there must be some wind damage, right? They're only calling you right after a major storm. You get out there and you have shingle slide out. Well, is it all slide out or could some of it have been worsened or exacerbated by wind? Let's find out. There are many reasons why slide out occurs. The usual suspects are overdriven nails, nails that are installed too high so that the second layer of a laminate isn't securely fastened to a roof deck. Slide out can also occur from wind. How do you know if it's wind? How can you tell? Well, if it's wind damage, there should be some evidence of wind elsewhere on the roof for one thing. Kind of like hail, look for collateral damages. Do you have creased shingles? Do you have displaced fascia wrap? Do you have downed trees? If there's a tornado or a hurricane, then you obviously know that you've got a possibility that wind damage has occurred. And so some of the slide out could be caused by wind. If you don't have a hurricane, you don't have a tornado, there's no downburst, and there's a lot of thunderstorms that came through the area, how do you know if it was one of those thunderstorms that caused it? We really have to look as close as we can at the fasteners to really make some kind of a educated guess. Because most of what we do on roofs is subjective. We didn't witness the wind occur. We didn't see the shingles lift. We didn't see the hail impacting the shingle we're looking at at the exact spot that we're saying is hail damaged. So we're speculating. And that means that there's going to be human error involved. Let's look at the evidence. What can we determine? These shingles have slid out, fallen down as a grouping, something you normally see with traditional slide out. So if we've got shingles that are sliding out, we have to do a little bit more investigation to determine what's actually causing that. And this shingle up here looks like it's just the second layer that is coming out from underneath. That's usually an indication that there is an issue with high nailing. This second layer goes under this layer up here, and then there is a nail that goes through it. So I'm gonna come down here to a different shingle that I can show you some information on. So this is two layers that are combined. You can see this layer goes under the other one by roughly an inch. You can see where they overlap. It's about the width of the, between my two fingers. That's the nail zone. They put a nail there, it goes through both layers, like it's supposed to, and that's, then it's attached to the roof. So if they nail above that area, like up here, like where this nail hole is, see my finger? then that allows this layer to fall out because there's nothing fastening it to the roof. The only thing that's holding it on would be the glue strips that exist below these tabs. So we've got a glue strip there, and we've got a glue strip there. If we don't see a nail hole in this black strip anywhere, under the tabs, nope, nope. If we don't see a nail hole there, and we know that this one was high nailed, and that's probably why it's coming out. Now, whether or not that's the only thing that contributed to that shingle falling out is another question. So let's go to some of these other ones. We've got a nail hole here. See how perfectly round that is? Perfectly round nail holes are usually caused by blow through. The shingle nail gun shot the nail through the shingle because it had too much pressure. You can find the nail underneath it. The level of the nail is actually about the same height from the roof deck as the layer of shingles just underneath it. So it was shot too deep and it went through this shingle. So we know that there was overdriven nails. We know that it was high nailed because the nail zone is between my two fingers and then it's definitely above that area. Um, so things aren't looking too good for a wind claim right now. Let's go one more. Oh, that looks different. 
I've got to tear where this nail is. Clearly the nail wasn't overdriven because the height of the nail is above the roof deck, still in the shingle. What causes that tear? What caused this shingle to pull across that nail so hard that it tore through the fiberglass mat? Um, sometimes when you look at what appears to be slide out, you might find that there is indications that wind damage has actually occurred. We've only got three, maybe four shingles stuck together, so they're not gonna be heavy enough to really drag it through. So what causes a shingle to lift and pull? We're right at the ridge. When wind comes across that ridge, it creates a low pressure cell here with a pulling action in this direction. So it'll pull things this way as it comes across that ridge. It's part of a Bernoulli effect. So when it's coming across and it's pulling this shingle, it's gonna lift that shingle up, it's gonna flutter and be pulled this way. As it's fluttering and pulling, it's going to drag the shingles across whatever nails are still holding. This was at least partially caused by wind. All right, let's draw a picture so you guys can understand what I'm talking about. We got a house, it's got a little door, a little doorknob, it's got a window, because every house has a window, right? At least one, and then there's a cable roof. And it's got wind coming across it. It's got wind way up here. It's got wind down here. All the wind is coming straight out of there's no obstructions before it hits this house, right? Now the wind that's up here stays going straight across because there's no obstruction. It just goes whoosh all the way across. Up here might have a little bit of deflection because of this set of wind down here. Then this has kind of come up and it's going to deflect even more and it's going to continue on its way. But when this hits this roof, it can't just go straight through it. So it has to deflect up the roof. As it deflects up the roof, it's going to try to reestablish where it was because all of this coming together, compressing that air, changes things. So this is going to try to reestablish itself down here. This is going to come up and reestablish itself. So all this area where it's coming in here, it's speeding up whoosh, right over the roof and it just goes whoosh, really fast. And the homeowner sitting on the ground going, oh my God, my shingles are falling all over the roof. And his hair is flying really far back because the wind is going so fast. And ah, oh no, it looks like he's on fire. It looks like his face is on fire and his head is on fire. He just stopped dropping rope. Well, let's not worry about him right now. So we're actually talking about the wind on the roof. So when this becomes really fast with the Bernoulli principle, then it creates this low pressure zone right here, real big low pressure zone. And then it's less low pressure and less low pressure until it's all going roughly the same speed again so if that's low pressure there what happens to the shingles in this little area well they're gonna lift up and they're gonna flutter and they're gonna pull because of the friction of the air hitting the edge of that shingle and it's gonna pull out in this direction and when that happens that shingle is gonna be ripped in this direction and it's going to drag across that nail is that gonna happen down here where there's less of a pressure pressure differential no 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 wind damage down there from this effect now if wind was coming at it from a different angle possibly but this is where you're gonna have all that issue so if you've got slide out up here it could very well actually be because of the Bernoulli principle and wind coming across it and it has nothing to do with the fact that there might just be overdriven nails or anything to that effect how do we prove that you gotta look at the nails look at the nails the nails on the roof might have this big drag line where it started there, do, 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 drug through, and ended up there. If you've got a big drag line, that's because wind affected it. Well, when I was in high school, I had a great science teacher who allowed me to do some experimentation using a piece of paper. You put the piece of paper just below your lip and you blow across it. You see how the piece of paper lifts up, flutters. You can actually feel it tugging out of your fingers in that direction when you do this. That's what's happening at this ridge. I am wind. I do this with adjusters and engineers on roofs. I literally pull a piece of paper out and 
blow it in front of her face. So if you've got somebody on site that can really dig into everything that's going on and actually perform a thorough investigation, we can see what the nails look like. Why that shingle sliding out, and if any of it has anything to do with wind whatsoever, you'll be better off. So who do you get? You need a public adjuster. You need a good public adjuster, and you need them right away before the claim is filed, if possible. That way we can document everything and set things off on the right foot. Let us deal with the bull.